incredible accidental discoveries. Sometimes the most significant discoveries happen because someone set a goal for themselves and achieved it. Other times, those discoveries didn't happen on purpose. Take a look at all the things on our list and try to think of how different the world would be if those accidents didn't happen. Number 18, Coca-Cola. John Pemberton was a Confederate colonel who became wounded in the Civil War. His injuries from the war led him to become addicted to morphine. Pemberton wasn't just a colonel, he also worked as a pharmacist. When Pemberton first thought up of what would be later known as Coca-Cola, Pemberton wasn't trying to make the world famous drink. He wished to invent something that could replace the addiction to morphine and also cure headaches. The original Coca-Cola was a mixture of coca leaf and cola nuts. The carbonation aspect of the drink only happened after one of his lab assistants accidentally added carbonated water. Number 17, Velcro. We have a dog to thank for the invention of Velcro. One day, Swiss engineer George de Mistral was hunting with his pet canine. During their trip, de Mistral realized that tiny burrs kept sticking to his dog's fur. He took one of those burrs and put it under a microscope. He saw that the burrs had little books that let it cling on to all sorts of fabrics. For years after that, he took different types of textiles to create Velcro. De Mistral did not formally patent Velcro until 1955. The name comes from the combination of the words velvet and crochet. Number 16, Play-Doh. This modeling compound was first used as a wallpaper cleaner after its invention in the 1930s. Noah McVicker designed Play-Doh for a soap company. However, the product, which was called Kudo's Rainbow Modeling Compound, wasn't that popular and the company headed into bankruptcy. Then a school teacher named Kay Zufall gave the clay to her students for them to play with. Zufall happened to be McVicker's niece-in-law. The McVickers decided to add food coloring and soon Play-Doh was on the market. Number 15, Gunpowder. Gunpowder, or black powder, is the world's earliest known chemical explosive. It was invented in China during the 9th century, and then used throughout Eurasia for the next 400 years. Chinese alchemists wanted to find the key ingredient to immortality. One of their attempts included a mix of sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter. It didn't take them long to realize this mixture's explosive capabilities. Before weapons, gunpowder was primarily used for fireworks. By 1000 AD, the Chinese were using it for warfare. Number 14, Quainine. Quinine comes from the bark of a chinchona tree. Since the 17th century, people have used bark to treat malaria. Jesuit missionaries traveling in South America were the first to use quinine for this purpose. Legend says the use of quinine as a treatment came to be after a man suffering from malaria found himself lost in the jungle. He came across a pond at the base of a chinchona tree and drank the water. Shortly after, his fever went away and he went back to his village to tell everybody the good news. Even today, doctors utilize this substance as an anti-malarial compound. Nowadays, you'll also find quinine more commonly used in tonic water. Number 13, Slinky. Before video games and tablets, kids were much more easily entertained. That's where the Slinkies came in. Richard T. James invented the Slinky in 1943. James served as a naval engineer during World War II. While working to develop technology for warships, he found a way to use springs to prevent damage to certain instruments. After the war, he took this knowledge and created a toy out of it. Around 1945, the Slinky gained popularity as a children's toy. Number 12, Vaseline. We don't think much of Vaseline. It's just this clear, jelly-like product that we used on chap lips. Vaseline is a brand of petroleum jelly owned by British Dutch company Unilever. It all started in 1859, prior when Robert Chesebrew was investigating oil wells in Pennsylvania. There, he learned that oil fields left behind a residue called rod wax. This wax often clogged the machines and caused them to malfunction. Strangely enough, workers also used the wax on their skin to soothe cuts and burns. He thought this would be a profitable product, so Chesebrew invented the process of producing petroleum jelly and patented it in 1872. Number 11, X-ray. X-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation. Medical experts use X-rays to look into the bodies of patients. TSA uses X-rays to detect the contents of someone's luggage and pockets. We need to thank German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen for creating such a valuable tool. Röntgen invented the use of X-rays after work with a cathode ray tube. Nearby, he happened to have a fluorescent screen. He saw that even though the tube was covered, the fluorescent screen glowed when the tube turned on and other lights in the room were turned off. Rontgen tried all sorts of ways to block the rays. When he attempted to block the light with his hands, he saw his bones. Number 10, sweet and low. When people can't consume sugar, they reach for a packet of sweet and low. This artificial sweetener comes from granulated saccharin, combined with some cream of tartar and dextrose. Russian chemist Konstantin Falberg discovered saccharin in 1878 while working on coal tar derivatives at Johns Hopkins University. Falberg had forgotten to wash his hands before eating dinner. When he picked up a dinner roll, he noticed it was sweeter than usual. He went back to the lab and realized the sweetness came from the chemicals Falberg experimented with earlier. Because of this discovery, Benjamin Eisenstadt was able to come up with Sweet and Low in 1957. 
Number nine, safety glass. What's the difference between regular glass and your car's windshield? Windshields or windscreens installed in cars, buses, and aircrafts are made from laminated safety glass. This material protects the vehicle's occupants from dust, bugs, rocks, and if it has UV coating, it can protect people from ultraviolet radiation too. French scientist Edward Benedictus was in his lab over 100 years ago when he dropped a flask filled with cellulose nitrate, primarily liquid plastic. He saw that the glass didn't shatter, it was only partially broken. This occurrence gave him the idea that a plastic coating could strengthen the tolerability of glass. Thus, the safety glass was created. Number eight, super glue. Superglue can make things stick together forever. Anything that strong will have high commercial profitability. Scientist Harry Coover Jr. discovered the ingredient that would later become superglue while testing clear plastic gun sights intended for World War II. He stumbled upon a sticky substance while messing around with chemicals known as acrylates. The result was something much too sticky to use at the time. Fast forward years later to 1951, when Coover returned to a study on acrylates to use as a heat-resistant coating for jets. Together with his colleague, Fred Joyner, they found that this glue could make the lenses they stuck together impossible to separate. Joyner and Coover put it on the market, and superglue has been a hit ever since. Number seven, microwave oven. Imagine having to turn on the stove or start a fire to heat up your food. That doesn't sound convenient at all. Thank goodness for microwaves. Microwave ovens heat and cook food by emitting electromagnetic radiation on the microwave frequency range. The rotating plate inside microwaves allows the production of thermal energy to heat food quickly. The inventor of the microwave, Percy L. Spencer, was a prolific engineer. While tinkering with a microwave emitting device, he realized the chocolate bar in his pocket started to sizzle. He then designed the microwave oven for culinary purposes. Spencer worked for the Raytheon Corporation and patented the first microwave in 1945. Number six, penicillin. The term penicillin refers to a group of antibiotics that combat bacterial infections. Scottish scientist and professor of bacteriology, Sir Alexander Fleming, discovered penicillin in 1928. Fleming noticed that one of his petri dishes with the Staphylococcus bacteria grew mold. From this mold, he found a strain of penicillin that stopped bacterial growth in its tracks. By 1942, medical experts were using penicillin to treat infections. Had Fleming immediately destroyed or cleaned those dishes, the world may not have ever found penicillin. Number five, insulin. The pancreas naturally produces insulin to let your body use sugars from carbs for energy. Insulin keeps your blood sugar stable, preventing your body from experiencing hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. When someone has a condition like type 1 diabetes, it means their body cannot make insulin because the cells in their pancreas are either damaged or destroyed. In these cases, they need insulin injections. The discovery of insulin came after doctors Joseph von Meering and Oscar Minkowski removed the pancreas of a healthy dog to study how the pancreas affects digestion. Days later, they noted that flies were swarming around the dog's urine. They realized that the urine was full of sugar and they had given the dog diabetes. During the 1920s, researchers at the University of Toronto figured out a way to isolate pancreatic secretion or insulin. Number four, Bakelite. The scientific term for Bakelite is polyoxybenzylmethylenglycolonhydride. No wonder most people refer to it as Bakelite. It was the first plastic to be made from synthetic components. Bakelite is known to be heat resistant and used to create a variety of things like toys, firearms, jewelry, kitchenware, and more. It was first patented in 1909, two years after Belgian-American chemist Leo Bakeland developed it. Back in 1907, Bakeland sought to find an alternative to insulate wire that did not involve shellac, derived from the poop of Asian beetles. While he experimented, he just so happened to create Bakelite. Number three, radioactivity. X-rays were discovered in 1895. A year later, French engineer Antoine Henry Becquerel began investigating if there was a connection between x-rays and the natural property of certain substances that emit light called phosphorescence. Becquerel took photogenic plates and combined them with a uranium salt to see if he could absorb x-ray energy from the sun. However, the day Becquerel tried, the sky was overcast. Still, he went ahead and developed the plates to find that uranium emitted radioactive rays, leading to the discovery of radioactivity. Becquerel received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903. Information from his experiment eventually led to the creation of radioactive devices. Number two, Teflon. American chemical company, Chemars, a spin-off of DuPont, owns the brand name of Teflon. We see Teflon most commonly used in cookware so that your food doesn't stick to the pan. This coating is also known as polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE. Chemist Roy Plunkett created PFTE after leaving a canister of what was supposed to be gas in a refrigeration chamber. Upon his return, he found that the canister was not full of gas, but that it was full of small white flakes. He shrugged his shoulders and decided to work with what he had. The substance had an extremely high melting point, making it a perfect lubricant to use in the military and in the kitchen. 
Before we reveal number one, we have a question for you. What is one invention you could never live without? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number one, vulcanized rubber. Vulcanization is the chemical process of hardening rubber. Part of this process adds sulfur to help convert rubber into a more durable material. Vulcanized rubber can maintain its elasticity in frigid and warm temperatures. It has been used to make anything from bowling balls, erasers, rubber hoses, shoes, and tires. To learn about its origin, we look at Charles Goodyear. In 1839, this scientist was in the middle of demonstrating one of his experiments when he accidentally dropped a rubber on a hot stove. The rubber turned into a leather-like material that also happened to be weatherproof. Decades after his passing, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company were founded, which kickstarted the importance of vulcanized rubber in the manufacturing industry.